so here is the relay that was bad last time that I was here that I diagnosed with the burnt capacitors and actual burnt relay in there. And we got a new one, so I'm gonna start pulling this one apart. And thankfully they labeled everything, so it should be simple enough. Uh, and it looks like I can just get rid of this as well because they put this in as a substitute for the burnt terminals there so it'll be a little bit neater by the time i'm done hopefully okay so here's the new control um we got zone 5 wired up in there now and primary pump our power coming in our end switch and all of our thermostats Really nice that everything was labeled, and we are good to go. Okay, so our new one is in. We verified that all our zone valves open. They make end switch. Now you can see we only have a few calling, a few zone valves open, and everything's working properly. Boilers at temperature. We're circulating hot water throughout, and we are good to go. So I'm back in the massive house on the water. And I'm in the master, because he wasn't getting any heat here. But we have heat now. It's just the thermostat. I ripped out a nest and put this in, and we're good to go. It's reading 39 because of the truck. It'll warm up. But now we're getting heat to our radiators, and we're good to go here. So I am headed now to a customer that I had put in the schedule for tomorrow. He called over the weekend. He has a 30-year-old boiler. I think it's steam and they've blown through like three or four transformers. They just keep replacing transformers. So something's wrong somewhere. I, I'm willing to wager it's the low water cutoff, but we'll see what happens there. Okay, so here's our boiler. This transformer they've been replacing because it keeps going bad. There's uh, some funky stuff going on here with the wiring, but Trying to trace everything back to where it goes control-wise is a little bit rough because there's so many different thermostat wires coming in. But there were a few connections reversed based off of this diagram. I don't know if maybe it happened when the transformer was switched out um, or if we still have something going on that's causing the transformer to fry. It could be one of these controls, but it could also be that this would just went bad. They put in a new one, but they put it in wrong. So. We're gonna see what happens. Okay, so to the funeral home. Yeah, we're heading out of the funeral home. I, uh, we have a new gentleman working with us today. He started. Um, that call defeated me. I lost. Um, I couldn't get him heat today. There's a lot going on with the wiring, and wires aren't going to the right places. But a lot of the wiring, it's just, it's too too much to trace out and it's going to be a lot of time and we don't know which controls work and don't work because um, the transformers were being fried it's, so it's possible very possible that we have an issue with our low water cutoff maybe our auto feed and then our gas controls are obsolete so we're going to rather than replace the boiler because there's no real reason to do that we're gonna come back with a steam trim kit and an ignition uh, control kit to completely convert it as if it were a new boiler. And it's nowhere near close to the price of replacing the boiler. So we'll see how that goes when I'm back. Not this coming Wednesday, but next Wednesday uh, because he's going to Florida. Okay, so uh, I'm here for no heat in the back room. It's a separate boiler. It's a big room. It's where they actually have the wake for people. And all the thermostat, all the radiator covers were like off completely. Um, but the thermostat is ancient. And I think that that could also be giving them some issue because it's not even reading the right room temperature. So we're going to replace the thermostat. But I think fixing the radiators is going to be a big majority of the resolution too because all the plates were just falling blocking airflow now everything's mounted properly so cool air could go under and hot air could come up but the boiler is like at temperature it's very hot so we're gonna do thermostat so the 
this is the room that we're in. And we put the thermostat on. And it's reading that because of the truck, it'll warm up. It already went up a degree. And then they'll have a consistently working thermostat. And these are all those baseboards where the covers were like on the ground, where the tops were closed. So we secured everything as best as we could. And you could feel the heat coming up through them. So we should be okay. Okay, so now I am headed to a call in Huntington, which is right by where I live. So I dropped the new guy off at the house. I thought I dropped a new guy off at the shop. And so far he seems at the stop sign, turn right onto good. West I mean, Broadway. He's, he's funny, so and he knows plumbing, so you know, we'll see what happens. I have a feeling he's gonna stay, but I don't know. With the luck that we've been having. In half a mile, turn left onto my road. Uh yeah, I'm going to a dub curve to fix a high efficiency boiler. Uh, this is the only Dunkirk I've ever seen. Tech support for them was not good. The guy was very abrupt and didn't want to help me. So I wanted to say after re-watching this that tech support when I arrived today at, at this call uh, after this little clip I recorded was amazing. Um, I'm not familiar with the boiler. I'm not familiar with the errors. Because um, every boiler, certain errors will happen with different component failures a lot of the times it's like similar but i i called tech support um and i asked them a few questions and the guy i explained you know that like i know high efficiencies and blah 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 and the guy was like okay and he knew exactly what i like what i wanted and he said you're gonna want to check this you're gonna want to check this you're gonna want to check this after that, you're going to want to do this, and then check this, and this, and this, and then you're going to want to do this. And if you have any issues past that, then give us a call. And that was exactly what I needed. I was able to just bang it out, check all those things in like five minutes, and uh, it, it worked out really nicely. So their tech support isn't awful. I Maybe just the gentleman I spoke with was having a bad day, or maybe they were super busy um, the first time I was there, but... Tech support for Dunkirk, so far, that may have been one of the best tech support calls I've ever had. He was just very straight and to the point, told me what I needed to do, short couple minute phone call, that was it. I was able to take it from there. Because that's why I, 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 what I'm looking for when I call tech support, I don't want them to baby me through everything. I just want to know how, how this specific boiler might be different from others in like testing and troubleshooting because they all work differently even though they have they do the same thing uh so yeah i just wanted to add that in there but i got a control board for it because it's the error is giving the power issue there's no power issue the power coming in is just where it needs to be so it's 120 volts 60 hertz power to the line then not power to the neutral, turn left. power from line to neutral, power from line to ground, so we'll see what happens. Okay, so I just got our new control board in. When we took this one out, noticed a little bit of corrosion there, but there's a good bit more right here from water getting in. And that would have been what fried our control board. We're running, we're giving domestic hot water, and right now we're working on heat, rising the temperature. It's gonna take time because how cold the water is and it's not gonna to wanna to heat it up all at once. It does a gradual temperature rise between supply and return. But um, when we did light, we got a little bit of a boom. Um, and then when I was pushing on this, it sounded like we were getting a noise from our blower, but it's not even touching the blower. So I don't know if that's gonna be an issue, but it looks like we will probably have to adjust combustion, see what our incoming gas pressure is and everything like that. So this brings me to my next point, which was again, a good reason I had called tech support because I had comments saying, it seems like you call tech support a lot. And I do call tech support a lot. I call them when I have the availability to do that without wasting time. And when I have like real reason to call them, um, because I would have, without calling tech support, because I don't, I'm not trained on this boiler, 
I would have tried to adjust screws on the gas valve in order to set our combustion. And after speaking with tech support, he told me that the combustion is actually done by the machine. Like, it's built into the control board. So if I were to do that, I would have seriously messed things up. So I was glad that I spoke with them. Um, I did see, reading through the manual uh, briefly prior to arriving, uh, that you can adjust combustion like with the control board. But again, I, I'm not familiar with the equipment 100%. I don't see it often. This was the first time. So I call tech support to, to learn. I don't call them to, for them to walk me through everything. Uh, it seems like people might not be fully understanding that. Like, I'm not calling them because I don't know what to do. I'm calling them because I want to make sure that I'm doing it how they would want it to be done or how it needs to be done for this specific product because all these different manufacturers now are making all these different high-efficiency boilers. They all, like, work differently. You have the tankless brand I can't say. You have Dunkirk. You have Wamaclean. You have Burnham. You have Renai. You have, um... Bosch, you have Badaris. You, there's countless brands out there, and everybody has different things that need to be done. So, I was just glad that I called rather than trying to shoot for something and making the situation worse. Dunkirk DCC 150. And we got our So I just pulled igniter, and I'm sure that this is not what it's supposed to look like. So I think that might be our main problem with booming at ignition. It's probably building up so much gas before it lights because it's struggling to send the spark that far of a distance. I mean, our flame sensor is dirty, but for now I'm going to clean them, see if we get any better result, because I'm not getting an igniter today. That's... Not something that's going to be able to happen. Okay, so I'm glad that we're at least up and running for the time being till we get uh, the igniter replaced and then did our combustion test. Interesting thing is you adjust combustion through the actual display rather than through the uh, gas valve, which is like, pretty cool. Um, but this was a very big nightmare to work on uh, because of how long we had to wait to get the parts. Um, it was, they came from the, the factory and it was just like this whole thing. It took a week to get them. Um, but I'm happy, happy he's up and running. They haven't had heat all, all through these cold, uh, these cold few days we've had 20 degree teens. So nice. Yes. Yeah, so he had been without heat for over a week and I'm just thankful that his pipes didn't freeze. And it was hard for him and his family. He had to uh, bring his young, very young daughters to his to family members so that they could sleep. And uh, I guess with all the stress going on, there were a lot of fights happening in the family. So I was really thrilled at how happy he was that I could get it fixed. And I really didn't expect to be able to have it up and running today. I thought for sure we'd need new, new components uh, based off of what he was telling me. But, uh, yeah, I was, I was super, super excited to be able to give him heat. It was, like, such a change in how the day went. Like, the day went well, but I, I was expecting to kind of be disappointed at this call or that we'd have to wait more for some parts. But, yeah, it was really nice uh, to be able to give him heat and for him, like, the smile on his face, the relief that he felt when he saw that boiler running and had hot water. He was running all around the house, checking all the faucets, and he was so excited. So it's always nice to see that. And then they really, really appreciate it. And um, I believe he signed up for the maintenance agreement as well. I'm recording this a day later, this uh, outro. But hopefully you enjoyed watching the video. Comment any advice or criticisms or feedback. Uh, like the video if you liked it. Like it if you didn't like it. And subscribe. Thanks for watching.